You're listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self-liberation, old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now, your hosts, Shane and Jason. Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, uh, the Self Liberator's Paradise. Uh, that website is pasnia.com, P A Z N I A.com. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about what we're building here, uh, in short, a vetted, decentralized network of self sufficient, permanent, autonomous zones. And uh, if you like what you see, please do consider becoming a stakeholder. Uh, there's a lot happening, and uh, I do believe you'll want to get involved. Uh, Pasnia silver coins uh, shaped like pyramids are, uh, uh, by way of the Pasnia mint, are, are on the way and uh, in the works. A uh, rifle electrical healing device is uh, incoming that I cannot wait to start experimenting with. And uh, we're, I guess, just simply put, we're conti- uh, continuing to build out and uh, make important connections in uh, building this parallel society uh, founded upon peace, truth, uh, and voluntarism. Again, the website is pasnia.com if you'd like to uh, join the Pasnia Second Realm Network uh, or just learn more. And uh, lastly, before I bring in my very special guest today, I'd like to remind you all that Libertarian Type Publications is a great way to support uh, the, uh, the Second Realm this holiday season. Uh, we have Freedom Strategy Guides, Agoras Liberty-Oriented, uh, Liberty-Oriented Fiction, uh, books on these peaceful, uh, peaceful philosophies, uh, Vanu uh, zines from the 1960s and 70s. Uh, discounted bundles, such as our Vanu bundle uh, or the Self-Liberation bundle. And uh, as of this morning, Sunday, December 5th, uh, you can now find Aura's Apothecary uh, there too. Uh, great natural products to assist you and your family uh, in your aspirations of health liberation. Uh, just visit libertyunderattack.com uh, to view our entire catalog and uh, make sure to use coupon code SELFLIBERATE uh, to take 10% off any book's purchase. And uh, if you're an author looking for a publisher, uh, we do that too. Uh, just visit the Publish With Us tab. Uh, the menu bar, uh, Liberty Anti Publications, share your story, find your freedom. So, uh, anyway, today we re- we re- re- uh, we revisit uh, the realm of spiritual self liberation, uh, a topic not uh, certainly not unfamiliar with my guest today, uh, Reagan Keeley, uh, whom I first interviewed back uh, way back in May 2017, which, if I recall, was actually her first podcast interview. Uh, in that discussion, we talked seasteading in private cities. Uh, fast forward to December 2017, to the very beginning of the Building the Second Realm series, and we had our first discussion, and really one of my first explorations, uh, on the importance of spirituality and looking inward uh, and building the free future. Uh, since that time, and especially after 2020, this has been a huge avenue of, inve- of, of investigation for me, uh, in addition to exploring spirituality. I've also become, uh, I'll back up, in addition to exploring spirituality, I've also become comfortable with the fact that I really don't know where the bookends of reality lie. Uh, that is, uh, what thoughts and beliefs I have are part of the programming, and uh, which which ones are actually the truth, uh, or otherwise my own thoughts. In that process, I, I believe in May 2020, I came across a channel called Quantum of Conscience. Uh, I watched basically every one of his videos since, and a few months back, he he uh, recommended a channel called Transforming the Darkness. Uh, turns out it was Reagan, so uh, I began following her new channel and uh, have resonated with so much of what she's been discussing, uh, one of her recent videos being the uh, origin point for today's podcast. Uh, so I'll leave the introduction there for now. Uh, Reagan, welcome to uh, welcome to the Vani Podcast. I guess you haven't been here before. Uh, you've been on LUA, but uh, yeah, it's incredible to chat again. And uh, uh, and and this is a take two for for the sake of the audience. We have we we did this uh, a week or two ago, and uh, there were, there was an issue with the recording. It's the first time it's ever happened. Um, but uh, we're we're back here, and I guess uh, yeah, it definitely feels a bit full circle, huh? Yes, it really does. And it's so good to be here. It's so exciting to especially bridge these worlds of spirituality and agorism. I think it's really important. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I, I definitely, definitely agree. Um, I definitely agree. So I guess it's it's been a few years uh, for my, I guess, longtime listeners, which are quite a few from LUA that, that come over here to Vanu. Um, it's been at least a few years since they, they might have heard from you. So uh, fill us in. Uh, what's, what's new with you and uh, uh, what have you been up to? Yes, um, really just studying and practicing a lot of um, these new, I guess, spiritual techniques and holistic healing, just seeing the infinite possibilities, you know, there really is so much, we have so much more we're capable of than obviously we've been shown. 
and a lot of that you know is is hands-on experimenting so i kind of feel like a mad scientist a lot of the times with that i think we all do learning these different holistic healing and energy healing doing reiki um you know all kinds of amazing things working on lots of uh videos and writing and um you know my new course about really activating your abilities these innate abilities that we all have so i've really been enjoying it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, you've you've definitely, uh, I guess, branched out and you're doing a lot of uh, a lot of new things. And again, the um, your website's transformingthedarkness.com for people if they want to uh, to check that out, right? Yes. Okay. Awesome. And uh, I guess the the other um, the other development I know of uh, that I found out at uh, the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest this year was that uh, um, you got a, a van to do some traveling, right? Uh, could you? That's you know, van nomadism is very near and dear to uh, to many of my listeners' hearts, and we did a long a long series on it a couple of years back. So yeah, tell us a bit about that and what what you got planned in, in that regard. Yes, it, it really is a dream come true. You know, I remember us talking about this years ago, and I used to always just like visualize it. So. It's, it is really such a dream come true. Um, we haven't done too much yet. We've done some camping um, kind of all around Michigan and, and a little bit in Ohio, but my goal, I really want to take a pilgrimage out West this spring, this summer, um, Alex and I to see some sacred sites, to see Pasnia, to see some beautiful people that I've been able to connect with. You know, I think many of us have been connecting with people from really all over the world, but for this, you know, all over the country, finding like-minded people that just get it, you know, it's really, I think, important right now to start connecting more and more with people like that. So I'm really excited. And of course, the freedom and seeing the scenery and seeing just the beauty of the countryside. It's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, I know we talked about, I know I made you aware of this first time we did this, but for, for the sake of the listeners, again, I think it's worth uh, worth at least mentioning. But um, you, you mentioned sacred sites. Well, um, Pasnia is near, we're, we're an hour and a half northeast of St. Louis. And um, there's something called the Kokia Mounds. Uh, it's this, you know, big mound, in, mound installation um, that's, uh, that is definitely worth looking at. And then there's also, um, I think it's a part of um, Bell, Smith Springs, uh, Bell Smith Springs Park, I think is what it's, what it's called. Um, but there's a there's a big pyramid in the middle of the woods, uh, just in the middle of the woods somewhere. So um, <laughs> they're like there's there's a lot of crazy shit, and th this area is interesting too because it's called Little Egypt, um, and you have like uh, there's Ky Cairo, Illinois. There's uh, um, the uh, the I guess uh, a, a school a couple hours south of here, which would be more more in that area. Um, up until recently, their their mascot was like uh, the mascot's a Saluki, but it used to be the Egyptian dog. Um, there's all sorts of weird like uh, weird Egyptian sort of uh, I guess tie-in. Uh, in this area so i mean yeah uh, come to pasnia and then also um i mean we're we're, we're probably going to plan it probably for spring at some point um because we, when we when we do things um whether here or elsewhere um we like to make a make a you know other pasnians aware so they can you know make plans and come out so we might we might plan like a uh a sort of i guess an expedition per se as part of the pasnia department of tourism maybe i don't know um but uh <laughs> yeah there's lots of cool stuff in the area for sure I love that. Even the second time hearing that, I'm still just in awe. That's that's really so amazing, and it's just so funny that it's so low key. You know, who would I've never heard of that until you mentioned it. So, yeah, and I think you know, it's it's just kind of is interesting too to a lot of our unknown history that we're digging up. I think that's I think finding our real history and a lot of um, things that it's so easy for that for for history to be forgotten or even hidden after just a few generations and we're seeing it right now in the world so yeah it's very very fascinating i would love to go and just feel <laughs> the energy there and, and see all that stuff yeah yeah for sure for sure um so i guess uh um we can go ahead and get more into more into what we we're going to talk about today in, in regards to spiritual self-liberation and yeah we do i do we do have a, a little bit of an outline and, and stuff we, we covered a little bit in the first in the first episode but um yeah definitely definitely was more of a free flow discussion the first time and i, I kind of foresee that foresee that now but i'd like to start with just for um for your sake and, and also i guess for the for the audience's sake too um since you know i have been in the solutions areas in the solutions realm and like anarchism for 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 years but uh, my perspective is definitely different today um it's definitely different today in that um i used to kind of have this perspective like obviously like i was looking into all sorts of solutions but i still had this you know very narrow um view of what was possible and you know what this reality was and, and all of that um 
And, uh, you know, at its core, and this feeds into basically all other areas too, but it stems from this, this perception management, or as I put in a recent article, it's this, um, it's this invisible mind, like, I, I guess this invisible prison around the human mind that's, you know, that's, that's put upon us through government, government indoctrination camps and um, then reinforced by, uh, by its graduates, right? Everyone's, you know, most everyone's a graduate of, of uh, you know, the indoctrination camps and it's just, it's, it's reinforced um, to no end. And if you don't, uh, if you don't go along with, you know, those, those strict doctrines, then you're kind of, uh, you know, viewed as out, out, outside of, you know, um, outside of that society. So it definitely stems very much so from like per perception management. Um, information control, which which is at its core, um, mind control, and I, I guess to to further elaborate, we've been you know beaten down and programmed into thinking that um, we're weak beings that need to look outwards uh, and outsource um, all of our decision making and and uh, you know decision uh, basically everything to um, to other people uh, instead of you know trusting ourselves and, and our abilities and um, and our intuition, all, all of those things. Uh, and and one of the one of the most relevant examples that comes to mind today, and just to make it really concrete for the for the listeners is. Um, like with Babylon Pharmaceuticals, I mean, like, uh, you know, so-called cancer is one of the biggest, one of the biggest scourges, right? Well, <clears throat> since like the 1930s and 40s, there have been, you know, an abundance of, abun abundance of actual solutions that have, you know, more than like a 1% success rate or whatever the, su whatever they claim the success rate is, regardless, poisoning the body doesn't heal it. Um, but like, uh, um, you know, like, uh, across the border in Baja, there's, you know, there's clinics that have, you know, 30%, 30 plus percent, um, success rates at, you know, reversing so-called, even like the worst stages, Dr. John Apsley, the, the guy that I interviewed, uh, on this podcast, uh, he's down in Florida and he's having, you know, great success with, with, uh, with patients. And then just like in regards to technology, the Rife uh, electrical healing device I mentioned early on, that's been around since the thirties and forties. And, um, I've got like a 25 page frequency list. Um, of, frequency, of frequencies that reverse, you know, so-called conditions and, and things like that. Um, and then just, you know, I guess out in the wilderness, turkey tail mushrooms are, they're, they're a pretty well-known, uh, you know, cancer cure. Um, like these things are all available, but in the, like, if you, if you look at, if, like, if you approach these things from like the first realm perspective, you're only going to get like one solution. And it's going to be poisoning yourself and it's going to cost a lot of money to poison yourself. And it's probably not going to work anyway. Right. So. Um, a lot of it's just really, really just perception management, and, and as I mentioned um, earlier on in the introduction, it's like trying to figure out where the, you know, where the, <coughs> where the bookends of reality lie, uh, and I'm not always, uh, not always quite sure on that. But what I do know is that uh, um, things like uh, I've been looking into, uh, you know, breakthrough energy, like uh, independent energy, because um, obviously, you know, going off grid is an important thing. But um, I don't, th I, I don't, I guess, view that in the sense of. Uh, um, like solar or whatever, I'm thinking more, um, you know, more in, in, in terms of uh, some more, more, uh, I guess, be better, better, much better options, much better options. I'll just, I'll just leave it there for now. Um, so, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the pers my perspective's definitely expanded, um, and uh, I, and I guess tying in with, uh, you know, our, our, you know, our powers is of, of manifestation and 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 to, you know, harnessing some of these, uh, these, I guess, these newfound things. I mean, I, I really do think there's. Uh, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot to, a lot to be, a lot to be optimistic about and, uh, a lot that's, uh, um, a lot to look forward to. So I guess, uh, I'll, I'll cut, I'll quit rambling there. And, uh, um, if you have any, any comments on that so far, not really, not really a question. Yes. I mean, so much good stuff. You just packed so much good stuff into that. Um, the first thing that came up is, yeah, because it, one of the interesting things about, uh, waking up to your inner power is, you know, you, you can't help but see that, you know, all of these programs, like looking outside of yourself for solutions and answers and trusting external authorities over your own internal wisdom and all these kinds of things, um, it really is all by design. It's literally because it's so genius, because it, it really, it really, it's inverted because that's when we really give our power away. So coming back to, again, our inner source that's really when we can find our power and when it comes to healing the first and foremost thing is you really have to believe that you can heal you know a quick example is um for the there's this case where this one guy went to uh the traditional doctor and the doctor told him something that you know honestly you should never say to someone you have cancer you have six months to live and the guy died in six months and they did an autopsy and he didn't even die of cancer. So that's just one really clear example of like the power of your mind. And so the first thing really is you, you really have to, to believe, you know, and, and, the more, and that's coming back to your inner power. 
in your inner source and it and when you can really and that's hard you know sometimes that's really hard because again we've been so programmed with you can't heal this you can't heal this mm -hmm. um or or you have to sacrifice so much to to try to heal when really you know when when you can harness that you start to find like you said all kinds of solutions whether it's something like uh mushrooms or um like the rife machine and and these things that are so it's like if you if one just looks like really looks even though it is they try to hide it you will find these solutions they're, they're everywhere um unfortunately so many people in the past have just they just take what um air quote professionals say at face value which again most of those people they're just indoctrinated themselves they're trying to help they're not trying to harm people but we, again we're just so indoctrinated with this backwards medicine so yeah there's there's so many uh healing modalities too i mean just so many coming out now for people to try so i definitely think it's it's very promising you know um very exciting stuff very so many alternatives so many options you know again you just have to sometimes experiment you have to be willing to experiment and know that your life is so valuable that it's worth it's worth trying all these things and searching for all these things to heal, whether you have a sickness or whether you're just trying to be the best you can be, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you brought him, you brought, uh, brought up this example last time and I thought it was a really good one that I, that I forgot about. I've done, I've done some of his, um, I guess uh, a couple of his guided uh, guided meditations with Dr. Joe Dispenza, um, who I think, if I recall his story correctly, he he broke his back and the doctors told him he'd never walk again. And uh, he basically just he basically used uh, you know breathing and I guess breathing and spirituality meditation, and uh, um, he he reversed it. Now I mean he's he's pretty pop he's pretty big now, so like he's he's not a, like an uncommon name, but um, yeah, it really is uh, um, it, it really is hard because uh, I know up until. Um, up until a few years back, I thought like I I just kind of assumed I'd have like I'd I'd, I'd be I'd have di diabetes my whole life, and I'm I'm still insulin independent. But um, at the same time, like I, I understand that um, you know I I poisoned myself and was poisoned for like 20 years. I can't expect like miraculous results in a few. Um, like it, it might take a little bit of time, and I've seen dr you know drastic improvements so far. So um, so that's 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 kind of that's that's one aspect too. But yeah, you're you're totally right about the importance of just of just believing in that possibility. Because if you don't believe that that's actually possible, then it's probably it's not going to happen, right? Um, that's the, the 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 first step is just is, is kind of just uh, I guess uh, trusting um, that that's uh, and tr trusting. And I also kind of came to the the realization too that. Um, I'm thankful for my, my so-called diabetes because if I, if I wouldn't have gotten diagnosed with it, um, then I probably would have gone into the Marines, which I wanted to do. I wanted to follow my grandpa's footsteps. So that saved me, saved me, saved me there. Um, and then uh, looking back on it too, like I wouldn't have entered the spirituality realm if it wasn't for, um, for that investigation to begin with. Um, I, I mean, I made lifestyle changes and all that, but um, it led me into realms like uh, like Ayurveda, um, where they, they're very much into yoga and meditation, and they talk about uh, um, you know chi and prana, um, these these things that are kind of just woo woo to you know, woo woo to Westerners. But uh, you know, it's all like it's all very very real. Um, it's all very real and, and, and demonstrable. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's that's one of the emphasis. One of the I think things I'm just I guess we're but we're emphasi emphasizing right now is just um, I guess being being open um, to the fact that uh, being open to the fact that most of what we've been we've been told and kind of programmed into believing is is not true and um, and most of it's been inverted at that. So um, really, if if you've been told something by by a, by a so-called authorities or or you, you hear about it in Babylon, it's probably wrong. Um, cause that's, that's been, uh, I guess what, what I, what I've discovered too. I'm, I'm sure you've, you've come across similar things. Absolutely. Like I said, so much of it, you know, the more you really study, uh, these things for yourself, the more you see that, uh, they, they're like, this is they, I can't help but feel like they were literally designed that way because they're completely backwards and completely designed to disempower individuals. It's a shame. Like it's not random. Like it's literally designed that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, you know those who uh, um, you know those who falsely imagine themselves to be our rulers were just uh, you know Babylon in general. Um, I, I mean, we, we we talked about the power of uh, the power of I guess um, emotions in that in that positive way, but there's also there's also a kind of negative way of that. And and really, it's it's the the 
um, the convincing, or I guess just the the first realm's reliance upon fear. Like it's or it's not really reliance. It's just it's just the it's the it's the main driver of everything that that transpires. I mean, look at what's going on right now. It's all if there was not the fear factor, then uh, then none of it could happen. All right, uh, most of it. I mean, most probably none of it could happen. Um, so um, I guess that's, this is the, the first one of the first things I, I'd like to get your thoughts on is um, like freedom versus freedom or fearedom. Um, and, and I guess for, for me, it's like I've, I've noticed that, you know, having a more macro perspective on, on the universe and creation has really helped me um, in that area. Because, I mean, I, yeah, I, I admit you know, there were definitely times there where fear restricted my actions uh, in the past, certainly. Um, but uh, I've found that uh, spirituality and, and kind of having this, this more macro perspective has been helpful. So, um, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on that, and, and what tips and advice would you have with, um, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, those, those, n not, those not necessarily useful emotions like fear and, and worry and, and et cetera? Yeah, that's such a good question. The first thing I just want to say, too, is, you know, speaking of, agorism and, and why it really is so like interconnected is it's almost like a fract they're like fractals of each other because in the same way that you know in agorism you know the philosophy is trying to starve the state uh like economically well it's the same thing emotionally because the this consciousness that is operating these systems of slavery and control yeah, it feeds on fear. Like it literally feeds on fear. That's its food source of like people call it louche. If you've ever heard of that, um, yep. literally parasites off of your energy. Like it's food. These lower uh, dimensional consciousnesses. So you know that's one reason. And I don't think that's like fear mongering. I think that's just important to know because once you stop doing the fear, obviously you cut off the food supply. You know, and you cut off the fuel. It really is the fuel. Is is fear. And other negative emotions, but fear is definitely the biggest one, fear, um, guilt, shame. And so, yes, the solution, and this is the most important part, and this is something that they should teach in school. This is something that should be taught to children, these real life things, like how to deal with your emotions in a healthy way. Because, again, it's so inverted that we're all so conditioned to deal with our emotions in almost like the most unhealthy way possible. Like, like we're really conditioned not to feel our emotions. So all of us, this is work we all have to do. You know, I've been working on this diligently for years and I still have work and I have to work on, you know, on a daily basis. And, and that's part of the journey, it's part of the process. Um, it's just feeling your emotions. So normally we're, we're so conditioned to either repress our emotions or to resist our emotions or to, um, basically project our emotions outward on the external world. And and these are all ways of avoiding just feeling your emotions because I don't know, I think people think that they shouldn't feel bad emotions or something's wrong with them if they feel anger or they feel depressed or they feel fear. Or And first and foremost, you really have to remind yourself and have compassion for yourself that there's literally nothing wrong with just feeling emotions. And in fact, feeling is healing, is how you transmute. That's literally alchemy. And again, I feel like this should be really taught because emo emotional repression and emotional issues are one of the main reasons I think people are so um, like dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. um, because again, so you have to feel it. So that's kind of my technique is when I feel like these negative emotions come on, again, whether it's fear, anger, sadness, I, I don't judge myself for it. I go as soon as I can, I find a place where I can kind of be quiet and just feel, you know, just feel the emotion. Like you don't want to attach stories and thoughts because that's that's what will hook you in and you'll start looping and be like, oh, well, I'm just not good enough. I just can't do it. Or this person is so annoying, you know, things like these external projections. Mm -hmm. Like you don't really want to blame people yourself. You want to just come into your heart and just feel and just breathe through it and it will hurt because these painful emotions hurt but it's not going to kill you just feel that sadness feel that anger don't resist it at all just let it just feel it and you know even if you have to cry or whatever you got to do just feel it because as soon as you start feeling it it will move through your body it will literally move it's like people say emotions are an energy in motion mm -hmm. it's true it, that's it's only when we resist or we keep projecting them outward or we try to repress you can't repress emotions forever they always have to come up that's why we get triggered again and again about the same thing it's, it's our opportunity to feel our stuff because even though it is painful that's 
that's transmutation, you know, that's alchemy for you. You have that pain, but when you just allow yourself to feel that and you realize it's just an emotion and it will pass and you just feel it fully without resistance, that's really when you transform it. And that's the beauty because one, when you do that work, you're going to be lighter after than you were before because a lot of these emotions, and you, this has even been shown, like emotions hold a magnetic field in your body, around your body. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these emotions, you know, we've been carrying for a long time. We all have childhood trauma and things like that. So it's like, one, you're going to be stronger and wiser after you just feel it. And when you really practice this a lot, you get really good at it. So it's like, it's harder at first, but then once you get used to just feeling your stuff again, instead of, uh, again, projecting or resisting it. And then you start having this transformation. And, and when you do that, you always, there's always lessons. And these are like golden nuggets that you need of wisdom because wisdom is so important to understand um, life and this reality. This is, again, so going back to kind of like what you were saying before, a lot of these things that we think are curses, if we can deal with them masterfully like this, um, they become blessings. They could become really important strengths that we really need. So yeah, that's a game changer. It really is. It really is. I think it's so important, you know, to, because emo humans are emotional creatures. It doesn't matter, mm -hmm. you know, how tough you think you are. There's, there's no way, like you can't deny those emotions. They literally have to be felt and they are, when you start harnessing them, they literally are superpowers. And this is how you can actually start to tap into um, you know, obviously reading people's energy or reading your own energy or many different spiritual abilities and gifts is from learning how to um, navigate your emotions like this. Yes, yes, cer certainly. And uh, um, so I guess the, the, a couple things that come to mind is um, like, so yeah, emotions and thoughts are magnetic. So once you and, and well, once you go from, um, I guess, uh, like you say, projecting or, or you know, um, looping these, you know, having these thoughts about yourself, um, negative thoughts. Um, you can, yeah, you can definitely start to, um, I mean, yeah, the outer is a reflection of the inner, right? Um, so you, you'll see your world and your environment start to start to change. Um, I know last year, uh, I guess, yeah, since 20, 20, 20, last year when I started kind of going down this, this route, um, like I, I'm out here on, in Pasadena, you know, 22 acres in the middle, in the, you know, beautiful wilderness. And, um, I would, you know, there'd just be times where I'd start where I'd feel angry. I'd feel anxious or worried. Or, or whatever like these things where it's like there's no there's literally no reason there are no external factors that be ca could be causing this so um so like it it, it drew it, it definitely drew my attention like like once you once you kind of once you unplug from the first realm and, and you kind of uh um, unplug from i guess from from the board i guess for lack of a better word and uh you start to you you get into that area where there's there's no reason to be feeling these like there's no reason to be feeling those emotions not that i not that i could like, identify externally right so it really forced me to to look inwards at why why i was why i was feeling those things and why i was experiencing them so uh, I'm, I'm definitely um uh yeah definitely 100 percent with you on that and um especially as of like the past year and a year and a half I, i've noticed that the more i bring my actions uh, in line with my principles and natural law the easier life gets uh and the simpler my desires come into fruition um i guess uh have you went to something similar i know uh um, there's a guy that i that i came across recently uh, named ross ben who um i mean he's talked about it for yeah, a couple of years now that you know to, the, the quickening um that it used to take months or years um for um, for manifestation to happen, but now you might see the effects of a cause reverberates that afternoon or evening. So, um, yeah, have you have you witnessed similar things in, in, as of late? Yeah, one thousand percent. And it's 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 speeding up a little bit every single day. It really is because the, the energy is changing so much on the planet. I mean, it's palpable if you can tune in. So even since the last time we talked, which was just a few weeks ago, I've even noticed it in my experience, speeding up since then. And that can manifest again, positively or negatively, you know, that's why we really have to take responsibility for our energy. And, um, and again, you know, as a side note, not beat ourselves up. Like, I think a lot of people, myself included, we're so apt to, oh, I shouldn't be feeling this or like, this is bad. And, or like, I hate this part of myself. And it's really, again, um, game changing when you realize you you really shouldn't fight yourself. It actually is very counterproductive to fight those aspects of yourself. It's much more better to try to integrate them and accept them and love them and, and transform them. You know, coming at these aspects with a completely different approach than, you know, 
oh, F you, I hate you, you know, it really doesn't, it really doesn't fare that well, but, um, let's see, I can't remember what I was going to say after, <laughs> there's, uh, oh yeah, the quickening, um, so that, but that ties in, you know, if you feel, like for me, I really have to follow my presence and my intuition in every single moment now, because, mm -hmm. for example, if, if I feel angry, and I try to force myself to do something I don't feel like doing, it's like it reflects back to me. Like it just yeah. won't work. Like it's just, it's like it won't, it's like everything will just go wrong. And then I'll get more angry. That's just one example until I finally just again say, okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to feel this anger and I'm going to surrender to it and I'm going to do what I need to do. And then I come back to doing that thing and from a more peaceful state or a more inspired state. And it's like effortless. It just works. So, you know, that's one of the ways that, yeah, the energy is reflecting back to us, mirroring back to us, our energy, like, boom, like instantly <laughs> for me, at least lately. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it definitely, um, it, it definitely has, it definitely has. And to, to get back to, um, to get back to something you said earlier, I, I, I guess we have, like, like I've, like I said, we've been, I've, I've, I've resonated with a lot of the, a lot of the videos you put up recently. And, uh, um, I put out an article, um, put out an article, it's in podcast form, uh, TVP number 122 on what I call cerebral and cognitive counter economics. And I guess speaking more in a macro perspective now, um, so as you explained, you know, just as agorism traditional objective is to starve the state financially, um, this application is starving them of energy and tension, unhelpful motions, et cetera. Um, and instead concentrating on the new. Um, so I, I just, just posted a conversation with Brandon, uh, Aragon from Agoras Nexus. And, and, uh, we were talking about this, that, uh, you know, like, uh, the money printer uh, with the money printer might not be agorism, like I guess the counter ag agorism in the realm of counter economics uh, might not be, or or, or I guess uh, in terms of f finances, well, might not necessarily be it by itself. But um, you take this stuff into account too. Um, that I mean, I know I I can't I, I I'm not going to deny my experiences and like my my, my experiences anymore. Like I, I I can see what's been going on in the past the past year and a half. Um, so I mean, yeah, like uh, um. I don't know. I guess what what are your what are your uh, I guess your your overall outlook and and, and perspective on on like uh, um, on I don't know people beginning to understand these things that we've been we've been uh, you know f focused on for, for for years now. I feel like it's our time. I mean, I can't even believe it. Sometimes you know, I think a lot of people who are just waking up are just like, you know, oh shit, like this is terrible. But I feel like for people like us that have been awake for a while like i remember just 10 years ago even five years ago like it's just you know the move it didn't we didn't have nearly as much momentum as we have now so i'm honestly really optimistic about it and i think that the events happening in the world are so absurd i mean i just can't even take them seriously sometimes like obviously it's unfortunate the people who are experiencing those consequences um and again i feel like you know, the more we come back to our inner guidance, the less we can avoid a lot of those like matrix consequences. It's not always easy, but but we really are more powerful than that. But yeah, it, but it's absurd. It's truly absurd. And I think that it is for a reason. I think it's almost it's almost, to me, it's almost like it's designed to, to make people wake up and, and and almost just shake people like I don't want to say force, but ultimately it's only going to get weirder. I know that. I've known that this whole time. Like everything we're seeing on the world stage is going to get like you think it's you can't it can't get any more ridiculous and it always will and it, and it has to because humans are so honestly lazy and they've been so comfortable that they just don't want to admit it. You know, obviously there's the cognitive dissonance and um just like uh the denial of what's going on because it's obviously brutal what we're seeing i mean it's like i would almost say that this is like some kind of a um genocide you know <laughs> there's something like that you know something really uh really crazy obviously that and it's like the whole world now and people are so in denial about what's been going on here and about some like really denial about almost the existence of evil itself people don't realize like what's really going on here the deception the lies the slavery the programming the mind control i mean this stuff has to be seen in my opinion i think there's no it, it literally has to be seen at all costs pretty much so i think we're gonna i think all these crazy things happening um you know again i think it's for a reason i think it's designed in a way to shake people and wake people up and 
for me and for people like us, I've found that, you know, my biggest goal is working with people who I'd say are already, um, you know, I want to say awake and, and working on things and building things, you know, whatever it may be, um, you know, like whether it's like an amazing homestead, I think that's so incredible, you know, what you're doing. And even like, you know, these um, inner communities or spiritual communities and structures or just, you know, any way that you feel called as an individual to start like building and creating. I think that's really the key. So that way, as people are waking up, you know, they can see we already, you know, there, there are solutions to everything. I mean, there have been for a long time. You know, there is obviously we, I mean, Nikola Tesla had free energy in 1900. Mm -hmm. Like there's cures for everything. There's ways to heal the earth. There's literally solutions to everything already. It's just, mm -hmm. it's literally been so repressed and so hidden and so, uh, you know, they try to control these things. But ultimately, when enough people come together in solidarity, they can't. Uh, hold back like the floodgates anymore. So that's a long answer, but I, I, I'm really excited. You know, I know that it's going to get weirder. I know that I'm, you know, who knows really how this is going to go down. I have mm -hmm. no idea. I think it will, there's a lot more chaos to come for sure. But, you know, ultimately I, I think that we're going to see some amazing things. And, and for the people who are so asleep, who are still in, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, you know, about them. I don't know what's going to happen to them, but I know there is definitely enough people who are awake and waking up to truly start building something amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it is, I mean, it, it'll definitely, it'll definitely be interesting. Um, it'll definitely be interesting because um, really once you, once you start to, I guess, like once you, once people start to open their eyes to some of these things and if they really, if they're really committed to the truth and like uh, striking the root, like you get to some really weird conclusions, like, holy shit, maybe the whole field of virology is a scam. Um, and like you get to some of these conclusions where like where you, that you can't, you can't like, and then they feed into basically every other aspect of your life too. So like, um, I, I mean, I could see it's like, it's, it, it could really either, it's, I, I kind of feel like it can only go in like one of two directions, like very radically. Like it can be like people just completely, um, you know, the first realm completely just stays asleep because it's a lot easier to than, than to face um, the fact that like we've all been like, I guess not, not to, I don't like to use those collective terms, but like the first realm, the, the reason the first realm exists is because they, um, people have been feeding, um, have been feeding it right with, with uh, they've, they've been feeding it this entire time um, and not looking at, uh, you know, the implications and, and what's been transpiring. So like either people will, um, you know, recognize that and, and uh, you know, go all the way with it. And, and we'll like and, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe we really will see, you know, uh, an Eden again here on Earth. Um, but uh, um, I guess, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll definitely be interesting. But I guess speaking more um, speaking more um, and uh, I guess in, in smaller terms, um, so that there's this notion of the generative force of creation, um, and like the like the, that we're you know the, as, as you've said that we're powerful generator you know powerful generator beings, and um, for you know at least for you know the past 150 years at least as long as we as long as we can remember right, um, people's energies emotions um, and attention has been completely basically fed into um, into the first realm into these systems of Babylon. So like I I'm I, I still again I can't I can't limit the possibilities here because. Um, I mean, look at all the people I'm connected to right now that um, have been working towards, you know, liberated lifestyles for a while. We don't have to have first realm employment. We can focus most most of our time, attention, and effort on building the second realm. Whereas before, like when I was working forty hour forty hour weeks at a servile society job, um, you know, I tried, but um, I mean, I had to drink a lot of alcohol just to get through that shit. So like now that I don't, now that, now they got that off my back, and uh, you know, I can I can focus my 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 whole attention and energy on this. Um, you know, a lot's happened for me again. Again, like I can't, I can't deny my own experiences, and, and I've, I've I've been hearing similar reports from other people too. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it could, uh, it, it it'll definitely, definitely be interesting to see, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, to see to see what transpires. But again, um, thank you know, I guess harking back to Vanu and agorism and and uh, freedom strategies like that, it doesn't really matter what. Uh, um, uh, it, I mean, it, it does matter in the sense that, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're fellow man, f fellow man, uh, mankind, and, you know, don't want to see these things happen to them. But, um, at the same time, we gotta, we gotta live our principles in the here and now. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 the, the, the slave life was never, was never an option for me. So I'm, I'm thankful that, yeah, I'm definitely thankful that I, I started to see through some of these things, um, before I ever really got, um, you know, super tied up into, into the system. Um, so that, that, I guess that's that's another uh, that's a question that comes to mind too because I I've, I was just uh, talking to uh, talking to someone about this yesterday that it like 
coming to like being being aware of these things so early early on and and, and i'll say our lives because we we both came across these things pretty young um it's kind of a blessing and a curse because um you like you see these things and uh um you know it's it's good to be like if you're trying to act morally and, and doing the right thing and all that but th- then then you you basically shut down like 95 percent of, of, of foreseeable options at that time um but again, I'm thankful for that because I wouldn't have been putting so much effort and attention on building the life that I have now. So, um, what do you what do you think about that? Uh, like, I guess uh, coming, being able to, I guess being aware of these things, I'm um, so young. I have to say, I think it's such a blessing. I'm I'm very grateful, you know, because as I'm watching the Matrix literally collapse and burn, um, I have to say, I really don't care. Like, to be honest, like I've never fit into it. Like, because I understand, you know. Uh, I feel like there was a time when things were a lot obviously different and, you know, people have kind of nostalgia for this old way of life. And I can definitely have compassion and honor that. But I guess for me, I, I've, I've never even lived it. Never I've never had experienced that, yeah. it. Um, oh, the eighties were great. So I'm I just didn't like, experience it. Yeah, exactly. It. Like I can understand that, <laughs> you know, that exactly. I can understand. And, you know, I can see that, that I'm sure that was like, you know, a fun time before things got, and things were believable then, you know, like the puppets and the politicians, I think they were a lot more believable. Whereas now it's literally off the charts. It's just like, what are you even saying? Like, it's literally crazy. But so I don't know, I think it's a blessing. And and even for me, like waking up, uh, I remember really at 15 and being like, oh, wow. Uh, I mean, it certainly wasn't easy because uh, you're already a teenager. You're already angsty and like, uh, you know, just full of rage and stuff. So, and, and emotions. So yeah, I had a lot of really hard times. Like I remember, you know, I thought we were going to be in FEMA camps in 2012, like as a teenager, like I seriously was freaking out. So, you know, I've been through that. That's why like, you know, this whole um, like apocalyptic stuff happening now, I'm just like, whatever, like bring it on. Like, I'm good. Like I'm all in, I'm ready, you know, because Either way, I'm building my best life. Like, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm not I'm not gonna be uh discouraged by any of that stuff anymore because ultimately it's usually just again fear mongering propaganda. And again, even even if you know anything like that is to come, it's like I'm still gonna be doing the best I can do to be free and you know, help mm-hmm. others be free. So doesn't really change much for me. <laughs> right. Right. And that's, and that's where, you know, I have to have some empathy for the fear too, because, you know, I mean, the, 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 the way that I put it now is, you know, like I went through my, my Alex Jones, ba- like watching Alex Jones documentaries in my basement, just fucking terrified that SWAT team was going to come kick through the door for no, no reason whatsoever. I mean, I, I had, I had those fears, you know, 10 years ago. Um, so like, I, 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 def- I definitely understand it, but uh, again, I think, uh, um, and, and this, this ties back into the, into the survival society too. Um, is I, I almost, or I was for, for quite some time. And I think it was, it was largely programmed, but like a very rationalist atheistic perspective. Um, very, very useful for scientism. Um, so like it's it, the, the, fir- the first realm in the survival, survival society, whatever term, whatever label you want to use for it. Um, like that's, that, that's, that's, that more like macro spiritual perspective is never, um, you know, like never really given as an, as an option, unless it's kind of the really, the, the bad new age stuff that feeds into, um, it feeds into the, the overall objective, which where the discernment comes in. Um, but, uh, <coughs> um, I just lost my, lost my train of thought. Um, but, uh, I was talking about uh, the, uh, the Serval Society being, um, oh yeah, not uh, for basically rejecting this, the spiritual macro perspective, which, which very easily enables enables all the fear so um yeah as you said earlier it's i i think it's all all by it's it's all all clearly by design right i mean it, there's 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 no other way um whether it's yeah whether it's uh you know um, human beings doing it or, or something else um who, who the hell knows at this point but um yeah yeah it's uh it's it's certainly interesting i don't really have a question there but if, if you have anything to respond with that um yeah it's and, you know, this is just a kind of an interesting side note for, you know, listeners that may be inter- interested is uh, a big part of it, too, is we've lost our history. Like, we've really lost our history. History, all the history we've been taught has been so changed and switched around and made up and many things lost. 
I think that's a really important piece of the puzzle to understand our, our value and why we're here. That's one of the things that really got me waking up spiritually is like, wait a second, why am I here? Like these people are telling me that we don't know why we're here. We're just on this random earth for literally no, like we're meaningless. Like they want us to think we're meaningless. They don't want us to know our real history and the advanced civilizations kind of full circle from the first part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think that's a really important piece of the puzzle is understanding that we actually have uh, way greater origins than obviously we're taught and you know that's just part of by design um confusing people and making us think that like we're something that we're really not and that we don't have we're not you know that we don't have a, a purpose for being here and that you know that again that ties into you know not only the fear that's controlling people but so many people think that life is meaningless like i mean that's just really sad to me and that's definitely part of the programming is like oh there's no meaning to life just do whatever you want just like you know what i mean who cares yeah. if you're a slave like who cares yeah. if you uh go just get shot up with some mystery juice like who cares it doesn't matter you know yeah yeah that's that's this uh, is all there is <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to get into that conversation, but that's why, you know, organized religion has been a major, a major tool in that too, is, um, at least in, in, in my opinion, mm -hmm. but, um, yes, the bringing up the corruption of history is, yeah. is, is, uh, is incredible because I, you know, um, <clears throat> I guess, uh, you look, you look back to like, I, I don't know, Ayurveda and even kind of even tribes, um, historical tribes, like, um, I guess the Native American principle is, you know, seven generations ahead, right? Um, you're, you're, you're always thinking seven generations beyond you whenever you, whenever you make a, make a decision or an action. Um, yeah, obviously like if, I mean, that's just, you, you think about like the, like the family history that's known nowadays and I need to dig into mine, but, um, you know, there, it's really not known. Like it's, it's really not, um, it's just kind of a distant kind of like, oh, you know, like I'm having a hard time putting it into words, but I think you understand what I'm saying. We're like, we don't really know. We don't know our history. We don't know our, our own, our own ancestral heritage. Um, a lot of us don't. Um, and, uh, yeah, obviously if, if you, you, you can't think seven generations ahead, um, if you're on, only focused on, on what's happening now, right. If you're only living in the fear in the fear of now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And, and you lose that, that wisdom and that remembrance of, because what is happening right now is completely relevant to what's been happening the past thousands of years, you know, library of Alexandria, like the, like there's been such, um, I mean, people have been taken out and murdered. I mean, uh, all these books burned like it's not that hard and there's a lot of evidence like physical evidence now of uh these civilizations that they were not dumb i mean they weren't right. monkeys, they weren't primitive like we were next level what happened to them you know it's like these things were destroyed because we've been in this spiritual battle where this dark the same dark forces there, it's not human, but it is uh, it manifests in certain humans, um, and it is decentralized. Really, uh, it's been like this. I mean, that's important. I think to understand is it's this isn't anything new. It's been like this, and now everything is going to be revealed. You know, in time. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's that's a good point. I was just having a conversation with a family member a couple weeks ago. And uh, I was surprised that that he, you know, that he, I guess, agreed with that point. But because um, I was talking, well, I guess I, my, I told him my position on technology, where like you, you come across things like uh, the Philadelphia Experiment in 1943, when uh, doing a ship allegedly, apparently, um, you know, got it, you know, um, achieved invisibility as well as teleportation to another another dock a few hundred miles away within seconds. Um, you hear about this stuff happening in the, in the early 20th century, and then you mentioned Nikola Tesla. I I I I, I came across that you know he was he. Um, I guess uh, caused an earthquake accidentally with one of his, you know, electrical technologies back in the in the tw in the nineteenth century. So it's like, well, shit. I guess, I guess, I, I guess I can't. I, I guess you know, weather can be manipulated. Weather, uh, you know, weather can be manipulated all the way back to that point. So the entire twentieth century for that could be a lie too. Um, it's just like we 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 definitely uh, we don't. Uh, yeah, we we don't uh, we don't we don't know these things. Uh, we we don't know these things. Um, and. Uh, um, you look at yeah, like again these these uh, these these pyramids. Um, a lot of these a lot of these uh, um, sites for you know these 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 ancient sites where um, they're like aligned with uh, they're aligned with uh, aligned with the heavens in some way, right? Um, and uh, these cathedrals mm -hmm. um, that um, you know with this that you know, this magnificent art and uh, architecture, like 
um, you compare that to what's 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 happening today, and, and this is where I was going with that conversation was like, with, like it's the te technology's not progressing as the first film thinks it is. Like we're we've regressed so much, um, mm -hmm. we've regressed so much. Um, so yeah, like this this uh, linear pro linear um, this linear form of progression that I guess that, that's that's that, that kind of impression. Um, that's not the case. Um, certainly not uh, from any, from what I've from, from what I've found out in the past year and a half. Um, seems like yeah, things are, are going backwards in, 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 in some ways. Um, in some ways, and I guess I have to ask on that one since we have been talking about the this um, I guess the history topic. Um, have you ever come across uh, anyone named Michelle, uh, a lady named Michelle Gibson, or someone like Howdy McCoskey, or any of those types? Of, and if you followed Quantum Conscience Channel, you might have come, you might have heard of these folks. I'm not sure. No, I actually haven't. No. Okay. Well, well, Howdy McCoskey um, put out this book. I, I, yeah, I read it last year. But uh, it was called Exposing the Expositions and looking at like the uh, World's Fairs uh, from like the 1850s to like uh, you know, like 1905 or thereabouts. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, it's nuts. It's nuts. But that resonated. Like I, I, I remember we did. We, I had a World's Fair um, at a World's Fair um, in one of my one of my middle school classes. So I was like World's Fair. I actually remember hearing about that. So I, I went and read the book and I've you know, followed their channel. But yeah, there's a lot of a lot of really inter interesting stuff with the history. And again, I do think it's I do think it's important. I do think it's relevant. And especially when um, there's another channel another another channel channel I follow. Um, and it's it's spelled it's pronounced weird, but uh, or it's spelled weird. But uh, it's this guy that basically does like free energy experiments on YouTube, and he's he makes monatomic gold and um, and it's like the exploring the exploring the the pre the free energy of the past, like this decentralized independent energy. Um, so yeah, like <clears throat> it may not seem extremely relevant, but when you when you realize when you're looking back at history, you're also kind of um, looking at it from like I guess a technological historian perspective. I don't know that just that word just came to me. Um, I mean, it makes it all, all the more interesting, mm -hmm. all the more relevant. Yes, and that's so fascinating. Yeah, I, I actually did get to see a um, uh, World Fair in San Fr the one in San Francisco, and I remember just looking at that like, this doesn't look like anything anyone has built like <laughs> in in America and like that I've ever seen. So it is really fascinating, and I, and I love that people are bringing that to the forefront. And another thing about that is. And this is so important is coming back to like our inner source it the, like one of in my understanding really the main and almost only ways to to really remember this history is like we can actually read uh i mean even through like hypnosis you see this a lot with a really good uh hypnotist is like you can remember you can actually find these memories they're like in our cellular uh memory um, remembering, you know, I feel like that's almost because of because so much has been destroyed and so much has been um, burned and taken out. It's almost like that's one of our own only ways is to go within, really hone that muscle of intuition and these spiritual abilities that we really do have, and start remembering, you know, remembering these uh, these old ways of doing things. I mean, even speaking of like ancestors, like that is in your DNA. Like it's not, it might sound crazy, but we really do have, have memories within us from beyond this lifetime. So for me, that's been really one of the only ways to really access some of this information um, as it comes up of, you know, what, what is this? Like, you know, and, and again, it is completely relevant. And a side note is also because we're, we're actually seeing it. We've been seeing it the past couple of years, like, um, people trying to like take down these statues and these historical things because they're bad or whatever. And it's like, it's literally history repeating itself, you know, just taking down mm -hmm. these, these uh, historic, you know, whether they are good or bad. It's like, that's part of our history that is important for us to not, again, you know, make those mistakes mm -hmm. again, or to learn, you know, create, have wisdom from, you know, we really need that, that wisdom, that lived wisdom of again, who we are, what we've done, where we're coming from, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's a great point. And uh, I'll, I'll bring up Ayurveda again in, in, in my um, pursuit of, of reversing my, my so-called type 1 diabetes. And um, the intergenerational stuff it has to come into it. It, def it definitely plays a part in, in the Ayurvedic perspective of, of, of type 1 diabetes for or diabetes in general. Um, first off, uh, there's not just two classifications for it. 
um, like there are, you know, here in, in wet here in the West. Um, they have like there's like 20 classifications and like four subclassifications or something along those lines. And uh, for for, t for for type one juvenile diabetes, um, they attribute it to, and again, like this is Ay Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, these me these methodologies that have a far a far greater history of success, um, like thousands of years, thousands of years, and actually working still to this day. Um, you can find some of the practices them. Um, but like, yeah, they, they definitely tie in like, um, I guess the, the ancestral trauma, the intergenerational type stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely all, definitely all, all in the DNA. And I've also heard even, even a step further with, with hip, with a hypnotist. Um, yeah, like it can be, they can pull, pull back memories and, and, and details that they never experienced personally. Um, not even with like their senses. So, um, yeah, the world is, the world's a really, a really weird place. Um, when you when you uh, when you kind of when you open your mind to, to a lot of these possibilities again you know don't um, don't open your, your your mind so far that your your brain falls out or whatever the silly quote is but um, you know use discernment but uh, but again don't uh, don't just t toss something out because it sounds crazy um, because maybe that's your programming talking you've been programmed to think that's crazy when in reality it's it's uh, it's actually the way the way that things operate so um, we've been yeah so we're coming up on on, on about an hour here um, I guess one other kind of conclusionary question on this on this note because I'm, I'm, I'm just curious um, we both come from uh, kind of the gorus anarchist perspective and um, I want I'm curious you know what the what the role um, the philosophy of anarchy or gorism plays in your life or I guess I'll just say anarchy more generally um, the role of philosophy of, of anarchy in your life today um, with I guess new experiences and, and new knowledge at hand yeah, I mean, it's truly a blessing because um, obviously this was one of the first things that I really got into years ago. So I find again and again as I um, get older that it it comes in handy. Like it's like lots of like full circle moments, I would say, like where this information that, you know, I used to study so much, all of a sudden it has like a, a whole new purpose, if that makes sense. Like because it is so connected. Like, for example, you know, what we're seeing right now, um, obviously, like it's obviously it's a spirit for me, it's a spiritual battle, it's a spiritual thing from the inside out. But of course, there is also the balance of um, practicality where we're at this time where people really are more than ever hungry for solutions. And I think, again, you know, something like agorism is so solution oriented. That's really the whole point. So having this background knowledge as what's happening right now, it's just like the most valuable thing because again, people are hungry for it and, and it just feels like it's time like to be, and it's just amazing, I guess what I'm saying, to be able to offer these incredible innovative ideas of agorism of, you know, don't just fight the old, build the new, like alternative ways to siphon energy from the, these systems of control, again, physically, economically, and spiritually, energetically, emotionally, mentally, um, and start creating completely new systems. That's always really stuck with me that, again, don't fight the old, build the new. Uh, so it, it really comes in handy and I'm still kind of, in a way, I feel like almost like, it's like I have a pot of, you know, all these ideas of like energy and healing and spirituality and, and holistic stuff. And ag agorism is definitely part of that and it's still developing but people really are more ready to hear it than ever and more ready to act on it than ever. So, you know, fusing these things, fusing, um, you know, agoristic strategies and philosophies with spirituality because it, it's so consistent. I mean, obviously you don't hurt people, you don't steal things like that's literally basic um, <laughs> morality, uh, you know, for living together. So it really is all connected. and. I'm excited to see what happens as, as we fuse these things. I think this is really, really key. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I definitely agree. Uh, I definitely agree, and uh, it's, it's really just the, it, and it's the way that things used to be addressed is like in a, in a holistic perspective, right? And that things not viewed uh, in isolation, where like the, you have a, a doctor for every part of the body. When in reality, it's, it's, it's all. I mean, it's, it's all connected. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it, it's all connected. Meridian lines, all. Um, 
Yeah, all, all of it. Um, and that's that's the way that things used to be addressed is, is, uh, is holistically. And, and so I think that's, uh, um, I guess, speaking to the first realm, another reason, another way, like just uh, another why of, of how things got to this point is um, like it's this uh, this Manhattan style compartmentalization like throughout all of society um, where it's it's not uh, like you, you have the one thing that you focus on and that's all that's all you, you your, your expertise is in and you 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 think you're the expert on that so you aren't going to step in anybody else's lane and tell them that they're not the expert right um, so like the society's built around um, built around uh, you know isolating people in their um, you know in their in their disciplines when um, yeah you look at things holistically and um, the spirituality part plays into the health part. You know, we're talking about energetics. Uh, what are we doing with, with a Rife machine or with um, Tibetan singing bulls or whatever? Well, we're, we're bringing the body back into balance with using electricity or frequency. Like, that's everything's vibration. So um, if you, you, you start looking at these things holistically and it, and it comes together really, really nicely um, as, it's kind of, as it's kind of intended to, right? It's this, maybe, that's, maybe that's one reason why we're here is to... Um, uh, you, you mentioned alchemy earlier on and... Um, I guess the um, to, for for the benefit of the of the listeners, it's the it's the breaking apart, the purification, and, and the and the the uh, reassimilation um, of you know that uh, you know that that perfection. Well, I, I kind of view um, I mentioned the compartmentalization. Well, like for the for the past 150 years, that's been the breaking apart, um, where everyone's isolated and broken apart. And then maybe this is the time now where the purification is happening, and then we're going to get the grand reunification. Um, of, of uh, you know whatever whatever that whatever that is whether it's you know decentralized network of second realms or or something greater I don't really know but uh, I'm looking forward to finding out. Yes, honestly, everything you just said gave me goosebumps. So that must you know it resonates strong. It's really exciting. Yeah, it's a good way to say it. <laughs> Very good. Well, um, yeah, I, I don't really have, uh, I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have much else to, to really cover here. I guess uh, you've, you've talked a little bit about uh, um, what you're, you, you talked a little bit about uh, your website earlier on. Tell, tell, tell people again uh, about what, you, what you're offering there and, and uh, where they can connect with you. Yeah. So again, transformingthedarkness.com. You find all kinds of resources. I have all kinds of amazing um, writings and techniques and tips. You know, I still, with all this spiritual stuff, I still like to keep it really practical. And and, and these are some really game-changing um, techniques and practices and knowledge. So that's there, obviously, for free. And I also do Reiki, which is energy healing. And it can be done long distance, um, as well as a few other services along those lines. And I did just come out with a course that I'm really proud of. It's really potent for anyone to no matter where you are, start activating your abilities in your own unique way. Because again, we all have these. This is truly innate. I mean, it's it's like your senses, but it's extra sensory being able to pick up on the more subtle information around you. I mean, it just adds a whole new layer to your reality, you know, being able to pick up on, on energy and being able to read it clearly. It, it is something that we all are capable of doing. And, you know, I share all the things that I've studied this stuff for years, so you know I know quite a few <laughs> tricks of the trade to help people to start opening that up at you know all the fundamental information as well as you know once you have those fundamentals, you can really run with it. You can really do a lot with it, you know, in your own way because we all have our own unique style, if you will. So yeah, and then if you have if you ever if you have to want to contact me for any reason as well, you can find all that stuff on my website. So thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, well, Reagan, I really appreciate you, you, you coming on again, and especially for, for taking another hour and, uh, you know, doing a take two on, on the conversation. I, I love the first one, and, and uh, I love this one, too. So uh, I definitely appreciate you coming on. I'll put links to uh, your website in the show notes, and I certainly do encourage um, everyone to go check out, uh, definitely go check out uh, her, her YouTube channel. I've really been enjoying your videos. I watch everyone that comes out. It's one of, one of the handful of um, you know, a handful of channels that, uh, that, that that's the case for. So I, I certainly do recommend it. Um, Reagan, anything else uh, you'd like to leave uh, the listeners with before I let you go? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I forgot to mention my YouTube, but that's on my website too. And, and that's one of my favorite things to do, honestly, is to just speak from the heart and share like the revelations that come to me. It, it really is one of my favorite things to just share with the community and hear what they, you know, it's just what we're building here is amazing. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this too, and it's an honor to be here. I'm I'm happy to to be here and talk about these things, and and 
it's just so exciting. It's really exciting. So thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. Certainly. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have to uh, have another conversation uh, here in the near future. I, I really enjoyed it and we'll, we'll have to see. Um, I've been doing some of these. Uh, uh, I did an episode with, a, with uh, Brian Easterday on um, Vedic astrology, working in kind of that, that, that aspect of, you know, for spiritual self-liberation. And uh, um, I, I've, so I've, I've been introducing folks to, to some of these topics. I'm sure some of them have just gone, gone, to the, gone, them, gone, gone that route uh, anyway. So I'm looking forward to hearing the feedback and, and uh, you know, definitely, definitely have to have to get you back on. Um, in the in the very near future. So yeah, th thanks again, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll certainly be in touch. Sounds amazing. Thank you. All right, guys, and there you have it, Reagan Keeley from TransformingTheDarkness.com. I certainly ho certainly hope you enjoy that conversation. I, I love conversations like that. It's kind of what I live for now. Um, and uh, um, yeah, definitely to check out her website, TransformingTheDarkness.com, and again her uh, her YouTube channel. But uh, yeah, last uh, all, I've, all all that I've got uh, for you guys is. Um, Make sure to check out Pazia.com to learn everything we're doing here uh, in this Pazia Second Realm Network. Um, VaniuPodcast.com for all things Vanu, uh, free books, audio books, um, pretty much endless extensive resources. You can be busy for quite some time. And then, uh, again, Libertarian Type Publications uh, if you're looking um, for any uh, any gifts this holiday season for, uh, for a self-liberator or if you're trying to... Uh, um, you know, propagandize any of your family members with some good, tr some good truths. Um, then uh, we'd certainly love to help with that. Livingunderattack.com, and uh, remember, Ors Apothecary um, is uh, up there as well. There's uh, nine products to help uh, you and your family achieve uh, health liberation. So, uh, thanks so much, guys. Uh, always remember, Vanu is yours for the making, and the second realm is yours for the building. Cheers. Vanu means relative physical invulnerability to coercion. Vanu is a contraction of voluntary and not vulnerable. Vanu is somewhat like freedom or security, but those words mean many different things to different people. Rather than argue about what those words ought to mean, I speak of Vanu. Coercion includes murder, mayhem, slavery, robbery, rape, extortion, pollution, any physical interference with peaceful activities of another, whether by individuals or organizations. Coercion, especially institutionalized forms such as war, regimentations, and taxes, is one of the major problems of mankind. Practically all past attempts at solution have been top-down efforts to change society as a whole. Since the days of Babylon, there have been countless attempts to reform governments, take over governments, destroy governments, and manipulate public opinion. At most, such efforts bring temporary relief. Usually they have little effect. Often, they make matters worse. Vanu life represents a different approach to the problem. Vanu life does not waste space scolding government officials or proclaiming how society ought to be. Vanu life speaks to you as an individual or small group and suggests ways you can avoid exploiting and being exploited. As you reduce the vulnerability, not only do you help yourself, Indirectly, you also help others by decreasing support of criminal institutions. Vanu is not necessarily only a few. Vanu will expand as there are more people willing to do. A Vanuan is a person who has achieved relative invulnerability to coercion. There are many kinds. Some live in the wilderness, where outsiders rarely go. Others live under the earth. Others move from place to place, living in vans, campers, buses, boats, or tents. Some have been Vanu for ages, people such as gypsies, mountain men, hobos, seminoles. Others are recent refugees from the dying cities. This issue describes some of the equipment and techniques used. In future issues, I hope you'll add your knowledge to what is in here. Vanu life. How to live and let live. Out of sight and minds of those unwilling to let live. By people who are doing it. To order your paperback copy today, just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu Life. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu Life. Or to download this publication for free, visit vanupodcast.com forward slash VL.